Welcome back. It is 923. This morning's mass shooting in California, combined with those recent shootings in Atlanta, Denver and Chicago, has brought to the forefront once again the debate over banning assault weapons. It is a top priority for the current administration, but opponents say they don't actually work to prevent these crimes. Lori Post is a professor of emergency medicine at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine, and she's joining us now to tell us about a study that she has done to show assault weapons bans do in fact work. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Okay, I want to break down your study because it's the first to look at the impact of the gun control policy on the number of mass shooting events, not the number of people killed or injured. So explain how this worked. So mass shooters in general um, are they, they're planners. They premeditate mass shootings. They think about where they can go to kill the most people. Their objective is just to kill as many people as possible. And so part of that plan is to in, is to um, bring a, a, ma a weapon with them that would kill the most people. And so tell me, as you and did the, the research quickly. into and so that. I'm sorry, we're breaking up a little bit here. But as you did the research into this, what did the study show you? Did it in fact show you that there was a correlation to access of assault weapons and mass shootings? Definitely. So I looked at the last 50, 53 years from 1966 to 2020, and there's 171 mass shootings. And then I look at the imposition of the federal assault weapons ban that also included a ban on large capacity magazines. Um, it was put into place in 1994. Unfortunately, it sunsetted in 2004. And we found that during those 10 years, it, it um, prevented approximately 11 mass shootings. And then we look at what would have happened had the ban remained in place. And we find that over the course of between um, 2004 and 2020, we could have prevented an additional 30 mass shootings. 30 mass shootings. You know, the president has talked about that 10 year uh, assault weapons ban. And he says that this 10 year ban also that it made a difference. He was there. He was there to help pass that ban. But there's been a RAND review of gun studies that questioned that. It was updated last year, and it concluded that there was inconclusive evidence for the effect of assault weapons bans on mass shootings. So what's your response to that? Is that before your study was released? Yeah, before my study. But um, p different studies have looked at different outcomes. So number one, some people looked at, um, did the assault weapons ban reduce mass sh or gun deaths in general? And so there are, you know, every year right now, we're up to about 44,000 people who will die by a gun um, in a single year. And mass shootings make up less than 1%. So if you, if you look at how the federal assault weapons ban impacted the number of gun deaths, it's not gonna have much of an effect. It washes out just because mass shootings really comprise only 1% or less than 1%. And then other studies looked at the number, the, you know, the outcome variable as just the number of deaths and the number of injuries. And there were studies that found support for that. There are also studies that found support for um, mass shooters. Um, the ease of the access to weapons um, made them more likely to commit mass shootings. Okay, I read so, something disturbing, adding, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if you, study. sorry. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, our, our feed is off a little bit, so I, I, I apologize okay. for that. But I read something disturbing, and I wonder if you agree that we might expect to see even more mass shootings now that the election is over and that we're climbing through the pandemic. Why is this the case? Okay, because um, what, what drives mass shooters is gaining notoriety, and so probably the contagion is the media, media coverage of mass shootings. And so the last mass shooting that happened um, up until this uh, month, March of 2020. And then the U.S. went into lockdown. The whole world was in crisis over COVID. We had um, political discourse going on, the primaries. We had drama going on with the last president. And so basically they sucked up all the oxygen so that there was not room on the national agenda um, to cover mass shootings. And so therefore the, the contagion is gone. And so now the COVID is, is, is receding. Um, things are a lot more calm in, the, in you know, politics political wise. So therefore, um, there's now room on the national agenda to cover mass shootings. And that is the contagion. And so we have the first one in Atlanta, which right. I which I thought would immediately result in another mass shooting, which would result in another one. And we see us 
as you know, one happened this morning again. Yeah, Lori Post, we appreciate your time. Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. Let's hope something happens before that can happen again. We do appreciate very interesting study that you have shared with us this morning. Thank you. Coming up. In